365 cut. These are the meaningless ramblings of a Scottish weed on whore and a pissy ex-video store clerk. Their ongoing mission is to set right the movie wrongs. They're gonna need a bigger podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the 365 Flicks Road to Infinity War. This is Ant-Man. It is, but it's no ordinary Ant-Man. It's it no ordinary Road not. to Infinity Wars. We have, uh, we have, we've been doing these episodes and we've been getting people to come on and help us because we are ex- exceptionally lazy. But uh, this time we have super fan Aaron Goodmiller. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Well, hello. Man? Doing good. It's it's great to finally have you on. We've been talking for... I mean, we've just been discussing there. We've been talking for about a year now. And you've been listening to the episodes. Uh, God bless you. I mean, I don't know why anybody would put themselves through that. And then <laughs> Because we, they're always a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. They're not fun to record. Well. They're painstaking to record. They're not painstaking. <laughs> fun to listen back to. <laughs> Look at the car in there, Kev. Yeah, we actually hate each other and we... Spit at each other when we finish recording. <laughs> so, so um, pulling the curtain back a little bit, um, you, mm-hmm. you, you've had a little bit of um, chat with us before we started there. Not much, but a little bit of chat there. Uh, most mm-hmm. of the people we've had on so far have been people that we've we've interviewed, people that are like um, friends who live in the town with us and all that. So what, what's it like actually having listened to the show and now being part of basically the Ranting and Raven? Uh, well, it's it's kind of strange because I usually uh, listen to you guys at uh, one and a half speed because I've got like six or seven different podcasts I listen to. So oh, that's weird. Um, hearing you guys at normal speed, it's it's uh, it's a little little bit jarring here. Do we do we just sound like idiots? <laughs> no, no, it's it's just a little a little bit because uh, I was expecting like uh, uh, the way you guys talk at one point five speed. It's like it's really fast and back and forth and back and forth. But it's it's a, a lot slower, a lot more mellow, which is uh, uh, actually uh, a little con- uh, uh, a little nicer to have to deal with. I was, <laughs> expecting, I was expecting like uh, machine gun fire talk back and forth. So that's um, that's a backhanded compliment, I'm sure. Is it? No, no, it's, it's, it's good. Trust me. <laughs> Plus, when I edit, I do um, I do tend to edit out all the ums and ahs, so it probably does sound like that. To be fair, because we probably sound like we never breathe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially especially at the speed I listen to, it's like it, it, I swear it's so fast. <laughs> well, well, my man, it's great to finally have you on. And um, what we're gonna do is because uh, back when we started talking. You sent me a movie that you made, so before we uh, get into the show, we're going to let you pimp yourself out a little bit and uh, let people know who you are, because to be fair, this should have happened before now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, well, uh, my name is Aaron Goodmiller, and uh, uh, I guess about a year ago now, um, uh, I, had a, uh, I directed a movie called Admins, which is uh, a day in the life of a couple of uh, systems administrators. Um, it's kind of like uh, clerks in yeah. an IT space. Um, where two guys just kind of uh, uh, talk about everything and anybody and make fun of everything and make fun of everybody. And um, uh, it's, it seems to do really well. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of people like it. Uh, uh, it, it. If you are an IT guy or an IT person in, in the field and uh, you, don't, you don't mind a lot of uh, um, un-PC jokes, then you, you're probably uh, like the movie. <laughs> so, I think that's why I took to it straight away. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I, I put it on, and within seconds, I was like, "Yeah, man, okay, this is great." <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it just because you're on the show or anything like that, and you listen to the episodes. Like, I genuinely loved admins, and when you sent it over to me, it was like right at the time when, you know, I love Office Space, I love Clerks, but I hadn't really watched anything of that vein for a while, and you kind of mm-hmm. threw it my way, and I was like, "This is exactly what I was looking for. This is brilliant." <laughs> but yeah, well, thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> and and then uh, and then not not that long ago, um, I, I don't know if we can we, if we can talk about it, but you you sent me a little um, a little taster of something else you're working on. Yeah, how, uh, how, yeah. How's that coming along? Um, uh, that's actually uh, I'm um, uh, in the middle of the uh, second rewrite on that, so nice. I'm hoping 
I'm hoping to uh, finish the re- rewrite on that um, in uh, the next month or so, um, and then uh, uh, get it to a couple a uh, couple people to read and see see how well it's taken. Um, that's uh, a uh, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of like Groundhog Day, mm. but uh, it's, the movie's called Click, um, and it's it's kind of like Groundhog Day, wherein the the day just kind of resets um, every time this guy uh, shuts his door, um, mm-hmm. but he's got to um, uh, uh, save his uh, stepson from these kidnappers, uh, these kidnappers, and so it's uh, his, the object uh, uh, for him is to uh, get through this day without having to. Uh, uh, with saving his son, uh, stepson with, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just completely messing this whole thing up. <laughs> no, you, no, you're no, right. no, you're doing fine. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you'd do. think I'd had a whole bunch of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's got he's got to get through this day without um, uh, that keeps resetting on him as he keeps trying to uh, save uh, save his stepson from these kidnappers. So um, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, and um, and. The, the main thing I want to do with it is uh, shoot it all in uh, a single take. So um, that's uh, it's kind of a, a thing that I've always liked. There's There's been a ton of movies that, that do that kind of thing with like a five or six or eight minute scene. Um, but I wanted to, to see if uh, I could do it with an entire film. So um, um, especially with something that uh, that resets every day. Um, it, uh, I, I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to get the, the right kind of financing to be to be able to shoot that kind of thing so yeah that's pretty ambitious that is ambitious <laughs> i do like that though. i love that i mean um, yeah. like like i say you you sent over for me to to have a little um a little look at and i thought it was brilliant like i, I really liked what i was reading and, and I, I wish you all the best on that one because that's something that I'd, I'd like to watch yeah i'm i'm hoping to be able to to make that one we uh uh, we've also got one that we're shooting uh, this summer called uh, Find, which is um, a movie about uh, geocaching. Uh, I don't know Ooh. if you guys have that kind of thing out there. Um, I think it's worldwide. Um, it's uh, geocaching is it's where you like a, a general person will take a uh, a box or a, a a carton or something like that and put it out uh, just anywhere in the in the wilderness and then. You go onto this app and you put the coordinates of your thing, and people will go out and find the box and swap out items or write that they found the box, kind of thing. Um, and then there's uh, our main character starts to go to these different things, and he starts finding body parts in these uh, nice. in huh. uh, in the boxes. So uh, it's about him trying to figure out where the body parts are and who's putting them there and that kind of thing. So I've never uh, heard of you. Okay. No, that. That, that can't, that's not a thing over here, is it? I have um, no idea couldn't tell you i look into it but yeah. i've never heard of it it's 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 all about the uh, geo coordinates so I, I don't understand uh, i i wouldn't i would think that they would have that there as well so oh, definitely i mean we've got some messed up people over here so oh yeah yeah <laughs> you probably you probably just find like a dozen used condoms or something in those boxes because <laughs> <laughs> we're a bit strange <laughs> we're, we're of a strange ilk over here <laughs> But yeah, that that is yourself, Aaron. Can you tell people where they can find you, where they can find your movies, and then we'll get into the Ant Manny goodness. Sure, sure. Um, I am everywhere uh, as Aaron Goodmiller, um, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I, uh, as far as I know, I'm the only one, only Aaron Goodmiller on the planet. So, nice. um, uh, should be uh, pretty easy to find. Um, admins, you can find at adminsmovie.com. Um, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. Cool. And I suggest you do because I did enjoy it, <laughs> and I will send it to you, Chris. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only get, later. That's it. You know. You get, all good. Kev get gets really lo- Kev gets loads and loads of screeners sent to him, and I never get to see any of them. Because <laughs> wait, what? You wouldn't watch. Well, them. most of them I wouldn't watch, but I would have watched Admirals <laughs> because I like Clarks. <laughs> I watch them because I'm supposed to review them for the website. Yeah. Do you review on the website? No. Exactly. <laughs> I review on the podcast. Do you? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, okay. <laughs> we are here to talk Ant-Man, which is apparently uh, the official last movie of Phase 2, but we're not going with that. No, we're not. That's no. still weird. No, that's still weird. So we're going to pretend this is the first movie of Phase 3. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because... They all end with it, Avengers, don't they? It's got an end with an I Avengers don't know why movie. they would do that. Yeah. It's just strange. It's yeah. just strange. 
So uh, some quick box office figures, and then we'll go into um, our thoughts and feelings when the movie was coming out. So uh, the domestic gross on this movie, which again is the US, because I can't figure out how to find out UK on this website, is uh, 180 million, which isn't too fantastic for the franchise at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's not massive, like it's. But worldwide, just over half a billion, which again, not too fantastic considering Avengers has just come out. But then, after Avengers Assemble, it was Iron Man 3. Yeah. Suppose it's, you know, but you're coming out of Age of Ultron into this, which is an unknown yeah. character. So, you know, it's it's one of those it's one of those risky mm. titles, isn't it? I mean, I'd heard of Ant-Man, but I didn't really know anything about him. It's still made its budget back, it's yeah. still made its money, and it's it's done okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but what we like to do before we go through the rundown, the synopsis of the plot, and how, how we, we pick little bits and pieces that we want to talk about, and anything you want to talk about, Aaron, just throw it out there mm-hmm. as we go through. But um, what I like to do first, I like to go around the table and we talk about when Ant-Man was coming coming out back in 2015, what were your thoughts going into this movie the first time, how did everyone feel about it, and we will start with Aaron. Okay, um, so I had, uh, when when they first announced it, I was like, what? Why would they make Ant-Man? <laughs> there was, there was, to me, it felt like there was no reason to make Ant-Man. Of course, I didn't know that he had, he was part of, like, the whole Avengers and everything. So, yeah. um, uh, I, I had no idea why would they, why they would even make that. I think, I think Paul Rudd's kid, uh, I wonder how bad that movie is going to be. Mm. Um, I, w- when I went and saw it, I didn't have, um, uh, I didn't, I didn't have, uh, like high hopes, I guess you could say for it. Um, but I was extremely and pleasantly surprised when I came out of there. It was, it was an excellent film. Um, and, uh, thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish because because it's different isn't it it's it's yeah. like you've had all these big team-up movies you've had all these action movies iron man movies franchise movies and then you get what is essentially a heist movie yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Mm-hmm. it's just like a bottle heist and, and it's a great little film so uh how did you feel chris going into going into this one uh i well i didn't get to see it at the cinema this was actually one that i wanted to see at the cinema mm. but it's one of those you know one of those times where you just you can't find time to go yeah. and see it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know anything about that man. Not really. I was aware of what the character was, but I didn't know anything about his, you know, his story or anything like that. Uh, but I mean, you know, you've got Michael Douglas in there. You've got Evangeline Lilly in there. Uh, yes, you Paul, do. Paul Rudd. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I like Paul Rudd. You know, uh, what was the film he did? Where he, he was it? He, he looked after the kid who was into like. Medieval fighting and stuff. Medieval oh, fighting. Uh, role role models. models. That yeah. was it. I love that movie. Oh, I actually yeah, yeah. love that movie. With McLovin. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Aye. Um, and, uh, you know, Phoebe Buffet's husband as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So there you go. But, uh, yeah, a Marvel heist movie. I was. I couldn't wait to see it. And uh, I didn't get to see it until it came out on Blu ray, but I'd, I had it pre ordered. Couldn't wait to see it. Um, yeah. Oh, there I, we go. I wish I'd gotten to see it in the cinema, though. Like you, um, I 100% wanted to go to the cinema to see this. Um, I'd seen most of the MCU in the cinema by this point, but um, I didn't go and see this one because of the whole Edgar Wright thing. Ah, like he, he was attached for a long time. It was his passion project. He was going to be making, and then he had a difference of opinion with the like the the Marvel execs. Basically, Kevin Feige said that it wasn't lining up with what they wanted. So yeah, he left, and they brought in. Peyton Reed, who mm-hmm. at that point I think had only directed Bring It On. So okay. I was kind of like, yeah, not really that interested in this movie anymore. I was wrong. Because mm. when it, when I finally got to see it, it's a cracking little movie. It is. It like, is like, yeah. Totally different movie. And from what I read today, I was having a look at the, the trivia on the IMDb, which we'll be doing at the end. A lot of this movie still is Edgar Wright's script. Mm. So, mm-hmm. you know, make of that what you will. Yeah, but I wasn't that keen on going to see it. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a great time watching it. Honestly, as soon as in the I can't remember which trailer it was, but as soon as that the they showed the Thomas the Tank, yeah, bit, yeah. I was in. I was sold. <laughs> <laughs> and it is like one of the best parts of the yeah. film. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. 
<laughs> you kind of just it's the way it sort of zooms out and shows you how small it actually is yeah. and like yeah. it looks like a train is barreling towards him and then like it just cuts out and it's all silent and uh-huh. you're like <sighs> <laughs> Fair it's like play. a little pop. Yeah, it's just like fair play, Marvel. <laughs> you, you've done us. You've done us. <laughs> but that's a very Edgar Wrighty thing. Yes, to, you know to have in your movie. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. And of course, they they used them. Um, they used CGI to make uh, Michael Douglas look young again. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll talk about that mm-hmm. in a minute. So, where uh, let's go into the movie proper and chris has got his notes Mm -hmm. so again aaron anything you want to throw in there just quickly shut us up and just go for it yeah just uh anything anything at all this is technically your show oh oh no okay (laughs) (laughs) imagine a soldier the size of an insect the ultimate secret weapon. If you give godlike powers to everyone, it's gonna be chaos. So how do we stop him? I know a guy. Scott. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so as you say, Kev, we open up in 1989 and we see uh, de-aged Michael Douglas, mm. which I, I think looks, <laughs> looks fucking great. Oh, he looks awesome. Uh, oh, it looks fantastic. It, it really does look absolutely spot on. A lot of times with these kind of things, with, with Civil War, a little bit with the de-aged uh, Robert Downey Jr. Mm. looks a little bit creepy. Tron, Tron Legacy with um, Jeff Bridges. I didn't see Tron that Legacy. did not work. Um, no, not at, all. not at all. Kurt Russell in Guardians 2. Mm, terrible. It looked a little bit creepy. But yeah, I yeah. think they did a phenomenal job of mm. Michael Douglas in this. I mean, he could have been in Wall Street for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's great. It's absolutely great. <laughs> Um, so he, he even said that uh, after he after he saw that in the theater, he was like, you know what? I think I need to go back and do a couple of other uh, of other films where I'm really young. <laughs> Wall Street Three. What what I like about money that, sometimes sleeps. Sometimes. <laughs> what I like about that scene as well is that the other guy on the other side of the table that he um, hits his face off the table. Mm-hmm. They, they also de-aged him. Yeah. But then when you see him later, there was no point de-aging. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they, they kind of up-aged Hayley Atwell. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, mm-hmm. mm, they didn't really need to do that That's either. That was just makeup though, wasn't it? It was just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But it was literally like, as I was re-watching it, and I, I looked at him and I'm like, did they do that to him as well? And then when you see him later, I'm like, they didn't need to do that to him. <laughs> he looks the same. <laughs> yeah. Most of the budget went on Michael Douglas. That's pretty much, yeah. pretty much. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so as you say, Kev, uh, we also see... Um, Peggy Carter there, yeah. who's been who's been upscaled, uh, upscaled, upscaled. upscaled. <laughs> she's, she's, um, she's not going to like that. <laughs> but, and she'll clearly be listening to this. Well, she listens to all of them. Well, she's not got much else well, to do. Is she? She's like, actually she's, right here. Do you want to talk to her? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also see uh, Howard Stark. Um, yeah. Who I, I forget his name, but it's um, bloody thingy out of Mad Men. You love him. How can you forget his name? I've that was shite with names, Kev. Come I on. don't know his name. Um, yeah, so uh, so Michael Douglas, uh, Hank Pym, is uh, part of S.H.I.E.L.D. And he quits because they want to use the Pym particle. Um, they basically want to weaponize it. Yeah. Yeah. Because with anything great in the MCU, it needs to be weaponized. Of course it does. Oh, of course it does. Yeah, but everywhere. Everywhere it's mm. got to be weaponized. Plus it's Howard Stark, and you know that's what the Starks are about. But mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think Dominic Cooper would be about that. No? No. No. <laughs> so then well we we uh, flash forward to present day um scott lang played by paul rudd is in prison um when we're introduced to him he's in a he's in like a, a big fight um and it's his goodbye ritual as mm. it's his last day in prison this is a great introduction to the character it is it, it is kind of tells you everything you need to know about scott lang like in this little five minute segment yeah yeah, I love it. We spoke about that kind of thing on the Avengers episode, Avengers Assemble, yeah. where you know the that that's a good a good bit of writing where mm. you find out what he's about in the first few minutes of a made on screen, and uh, yeah, it's it's a good little it's a good little intro to the character. I do love it. Yeah. yeah. So what do we, what do we think of Paul yeah. Rudd's in this movie? Mm. I enjoyed him. I, th- I thought he was fantastic in it. Um, just a little his little subtleties back and forth of uh, like like when. Um, uh, oh, crap! What's his name? Um, uh, when uh, Lewis was, Michael Pena. Uh, 
uh, yeah, Michael Pena, when he was um, uh, giving him his stories and everything about how he found yeah. out about the certain <laughs> heists and stuff, uh, just the way he's like, oh, no, just just the facts. Just give me the facts. There's too much information. All that kind of stuff. Oh, it's fantastic. He, he is great. He is great. Um, fr- from clueless to this. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> pl- playing little little small roles of, you know, the the hapless boyfriend or the brother of the main character to get in a mm. leading role in a massive Marvel yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And pulling it off. I was going to say, from, from Friends yeah. to Marvel Abs. Yeah, Marvel Abs. <laughs> and they are certainly Marvel, Marvel Abs. Uh, <laughs> so then, uh, then, then we meet... Have... Oh, you have to have them. Um, Michael Pena, who is yeah. uh, playing uh, Lewis, or Luis, who is great I mean, in this movie. Yeah. I can't say enough about Michael Pena. He's, he's an amazing actor. I absolutely love the guy who pieces. He's the reason that this movie is in my top five of the MCU. Yeah. It just Michael Pena could just—he just has to be on the screen, and I love it. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. It's... Uh, he's, I mean, I was the same. Like when I, when I watched this the first time, that was the first thing I said to you because I think you saw this before me. Yeah. Uh, and. Um, yeah, just the the first story, as you say, Aaron. The first oh. story where they're, they're doing the the camera going around everyone and everybody mm-hmm. speaking in his voice, <laughs> and uh, it's just amazing. It's just oh, so it's good. It really is yeah. so good. Uh, so he's uh, he's picking uh, Scott Lang up from prison. Um, they're driving. They're driving to uh, to his apartment, and uh, so he kind of Scott Lang asks him how he's doing. So he says, "My girlfriend left me." Uh, my mum died and my dad got department get got deported. But I got the van. <laughs> and, and get that van he did. He certainly did. He certainly did. Um so he, he tries that, that that line right there just kind of sets it up that he is at the quintessential uh comedic uh person in the movie. Oh yeah. 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 Every Marvel movie kinda needs one and he is just top notch. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I, t- I just love him in this film. <laughs> I, lo- I, lo- I love Michael Peña in almost every movie I've watched him in. Like, there's not there's very few films that I think he's bad in. I mean, he- even the movie um, Crash. I-, I hate the movie Crash. It's not a good movie. You know, the one where all the lives intersect. Oh, yep. yeah, yep. yeah. And uh, But he is phenomenal in it. Like, his character is the ground, like, the, the pulling force of that whole movie I've for me. I've only seen that once, if that. Oh, uh- that that scene with his daughter at the end, where she jumps in front of him. Oh, uh, I absolutely that's, bubbled. <laughs> that's my favorite part in the entire movie. It's such such a good scene. I'm not I'm not ashamed to say that I actually cried at that scene. <laughs> I, I, I can't think of what you're on about. And then it's like tears of joy when you realize the, like the twist. It's, it's yeah, just yeah. such an amazing scene. Oh yeah, and then the the way the daughter uh, it's like ah. Oh. See, I saved you. My my cape saved you. <laughs> Such a great scene. They, they should that's, just put that out as the movie, just that little scene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's probably what won it the the uh, best picture award. Oh, mil- million percent, million percent, because the movie's yeah. terrible. Oh, <laughs> the, the, yeah. the other crash with James Spader that was better. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> that was actually pretty off. good too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Well, the talker in the van, uh, Luis wants to like says he has a, uh, a job yeah. for Scott, but he has he's not really having any of it. He wants to go straight. Uh, he ends up working in a, an ice cream parlor. Um, it's a cool little cool little moment here where he the, the guy's trying to order like a burger, mm. and he's saying, "Dude, it's an ice cream parlor." <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's cool. His boss uh, has found out that he was in jail. Uh, he thinks it's cool as hell, but he's just, gonna, gonna have to let him go. You're still fired. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's when we get the first the the the, uh, the first Lewis or Lewis plan uh, for the big robbery. Uh, he wants Scott in on the job. I kind of love that scene when he um, he comes into the room and he sees his his friends. Like he's got the hacker friend sitting there, mm-hmm. and he's got like the dodgy friend just sort of sitting there. And then Luis is sort of there, and straight away Scott Lang's like, "Something's going on, yeah. Yeah. Like, there's, there's, you want me to do something? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you're telling these people too much information. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I love it. So at this point, uh, Scott still hasn't isn't having any of it. Uh, we cut away from there, and uh, Hank Pym 
a slightly older Hank Pym, is paying a visit, a rare visit to his company. Uh, so at this point, we're introduced to his daughter, Hope, played by Evangeline Lilly, and Darren Cross, mm. played by Corey Stroll. What do you think of a villain called Darren? <laughs> it's... It it doesn't really uh, give you any kind of fear. That kind of yeah. name. <laughs> it's not a villain's name, is it? It's no, not, not really. It's not no. Cross, no. but Darren. Yeah, the um, I mean, the actor is a pretty good villain. Corey Stoll's good. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Um, Darren the villain. <laughs> Dar- Darren the big bad. I, no. Is that your biggest no. peeve in this movie? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Cross thinks I'm not going to call him Darren anymore. Cross thinks that he's <laughs> figured out the secret to the pin particle, mm. and he wants to introduce the Yellow Jacket. The Yellow Jacket, not a great name either. No, no, <laughs> no not <laughs> at all. Uh, we get a Skynetty as fuck PR video. <laughs> it is basically Skynet. It's yeah, like yeah. the you know. It's uh, look at this amazing thing, but you're all screwed. The way that the way that that thing came across, it was like there was no way they were going to use that for anything other than evil. <laughs> but that's why we love it. They may as well have been just stepping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it turns it turns out the hope is actually secretly working for her dad to keep Cross from from developing the suit and properly developing the uh, the the pin particle. Mm. Um. At this point, Scott Lang goes to his daughter's birthday party. And he meets Bobby Cannavale, um, that big asshole. He does. He is an asshole. He's an asshole he in this yeah, movie. He's an asshole in everything. He was an asshole yeah. in uh, Boardwalk Empire as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he's kind of made to look like a dick. Yeah. Yeah. He's supposed to be like this this like proper good cop mm-hmm. in the movie, but he is just a dick. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. basically, yeah. But we get the it, first nice little father-daughter moment where he, yeah. uh, Scott gives her the horrendous teddy bear that <laughs> kind of screams at her, and the daughter loves it, mm. loves it to bits. Of course she does. Yeah, yeah. So that thing was so ugly. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> See, back in the day, remember you got wear bears. Yeah. Did you ever have a wear bear? Um, no, I think I had a wear bear. But... Yeah, we we had um, these wear bears over here. It was like uh, you maybe had them over there as well, but it was like um, it was like a care bear toy teddy, and it you could reverse its face, and it had fangs and evil eyes, and it was called oh, a wear bear. Yeah. I a comeback, oh. aren't they? Are they making a comeback? Like they are awesome. Mm-hmm. That that sounds very. I I might have to get one for my son now though. Oh, they were great. I'll I'll see if I can find a link to one. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh my god, my my son would love that. He used to scare my daughter with all the time. I love mine as well. Mine was awesome. I loved it. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we go back to Darren Cross at this point, who because he's a villain, mm, he's a villain. Uh, zaps the guy who who the only one um, who saw the presentation and all that and has taken issue with the yellow jacket yeah he was a bit like um, the Riddler wasn't he and it was like there's just too many questions too yeah. many questions Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's well he's Willem Dafoe in Spider-Man back to formula yeah you know um, so he gets zapped he gets turned into mush which is I, pretty cool I completely forgot about that scene yeah and when it happened it kind of took me by surprise yeah I was like he's just turning into a go- glob of goo that's, that's yeah, not that's, good it's pretty gross it's Quite um, dark, I suppose. It's pretty dark for a yeah. Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep saying that though. What? You keep saying that when we're doing these episodes. It's pretty dark for a Marvel movie. You've been saying that quite a lot. Because Marvel's is all about hearts and flowers. Well, it's fucking not, is it? Because you've been saying it a lot. <laughs> anyway, well, so I, I don't think it's your... as dark as the last uh, as the last um, uh, Captain Marvel movie. Oh my god, there was so much killing in that one. It was crazy. Mm. Well, that's what you need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. That's what you need in your Marvel movies is death, <laughs> death and destruction. Mm, mm-hmm. Definitely, and darkness, and darkness, and, and non CGI lips. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after being made to look like a dick, Scott decides that he's in with Luis's big job, and then uh, we well we get Luis explaining the job where he's you know saying you need to go this and yeah yeah uh, which is just great. It's just so good. Then we get the robbery. Uh, and we get to see Scott Lang doing some proper burglary. He is a pretty yeah, good burglar. Yeah, it's good. It's mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first is a fingerprint scanner. 
uh, so he takes a fingerprint and he does the the very um, resourceful Axel Fore- Foley uh, <laughs> super little MacGyver thing. kind of thing, yep. mm-hmm. uh, yep. which is pretty cool. Then we get uh, an old school badass safe from 1910, uh, which Scott manages to freeze open. Of course he does. Yeah, why the yep. hell not? <laughs> I like to think I could do that. I quite like how he um, he hangs the blanket up and everything because he knows it's going to like ping away and all yeah. that, and he's got somewhere to hide. <laughs> yeah. I love all that. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's like seeing what he's what he's about. Yeah, yeah. So inside the safe is the Ant Man suit, mm. which because there's no treasure or gold or anything, Scott says, "Screw it, I'm having it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he doesn't care. It's just uh, whatever's there, he's taking it because since he feels like he got screwed. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would do that. I would totally do that. Uh, <laughs> back to back to Darren Cross, um, who still can't get the shrinking formula right, and turns a lamb into mush this time. Yeah, that's I was more not... upsetting than the human. I was going to yeah. say I wasn't that bothered. Yeah, about no, you wouldn't be that bothered. <laughs> <laughs> Just a lamb. Bless. Yeah, bless it. I didn't do anything. <laughs> so. Um, Scott is is uh, trying to figure out what the what the crack is with the Ant Man suit, and then we get our first bit of shrink vision. Yeah, in the bathtub. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, it's great. It looks really good. Looks oh like yeah, it's really well done. Um, where uh, the bit where Lewis uh, turns the tap on in the in the tub, and it turns into a big like tidal wave, a big epic. It's sort of, wave in it's the, in one the of those one of those effects that when you shrink something like you know like in Honey I Shrunk the Kids and all that they they did their best but mm-hmm. it, it always looked kind of crappy yeah and, yeah and that was my main sort of like going into this movie they're gonna shrink them down and it's gonna look pretty shit yeah but it didn't like they did no it, it looks they good did it they do really well yeah they do they do yeah um, even the the little set pieces where they where they you could tell they made things bigger like a mm. uh, like a little ball of lint huge that kind of thing yeah um it, it was really well done i mean it didn't seem like they uh it seemed like they took a lot of time making sure that um uh even those small things were uh were looking well whereas like in honey i shrink the kids it seemed like they just tried to make everything a little bit bigger and then that was it they didn't really <laughs> put a lot of thought into it just didn't really work yeah, I did at the time. I still love it was movies. cool at the time. I, I oh yeah, yeah. At the time, it was fantastic. Go back and rewatch them. Yeah, well, the first one. Yeah, the second one's crap. But um, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. But that when that's your hero, yeah. that's your main character, your protagonist. You can't have it looking like shite. But the, mm-hmm. th- the thing is, as well, as we all get to when we talk Civil War, um, the the shrinking is done far better than when they make him huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. that looks terrible. It does not. It kind of does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So after escaping the tub, Scott then falls through a crack in the floor and somehow into a club. Yeah, a rocking. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Thumping club. Mm. Which okay, maybe they live above the in club? the middle of the day. They live above the club. It's yeah, fine. it's daytime. I know it's daytime. They well, may- it wouldn't. Have- it wouldn't have been so strange if if then he didn't fall down another floor into somebody else's apartment. Yeah, mm. it's a weird one. So it's like the club was in the middle of a couple of apartments. It was very strange. I think they just wanted the visual of Ant Man on the record. It is good. It's cool. It's a good gag. Doesn't make a yeah. great deal of sense that one though. Yeah. Um, so then he ends up, as you say, Aaron. He ends up on the next floor down again. He gets sucked into the Hoover, which is also cool. <laughs> uh, he gets thrown out. He gets he meets a, a, a massive rat, um, and then gets end up getting thrown out the window by a mouse trap. Yep. And it's all cool. It's a, you know, it looks great. The the rat is a little bit CGI. Mm. But I think it, they're just you know, they're just kind of trying to show you, you know, he's he's a small man in a big world kind of thing. Yeah. And we're gonna. Mm. Give you a little bit of an action set piece here to show you how this movie's going to go. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing that's, wrong with that's it. all I do. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so, at that point, uh, Scott tries to take the suit back to uh, to Pim's house, but he gets arrested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the line name. What was it? No, I'm not stealing something. I'm trying to return <laughs> something that I stole before. Yeah, that I stole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Scott is in prison. Um, Hank Pym pretends to be his lawyer. Uh, you got a cool little bit where the ants are over the camera. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's badass. Yeah. 
uh, Pet turns out that's Pim. A, and you go, that's the first little uh, thing where you can see that he's actually controlling the, uh, the ants, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it turns out that Pym has orchestrated the entire thing Ooh. because he wants Scott to help him. It's a bit of a leap, though, right? Because when when uh, Michael Pena tells you that story and it's going around, as you say, with like all of them doing his voice and everything, it's a bit of a leap that he puts that envelope in the car and it gets all the way back to him. Yeah. I was kind of sitting there and I was like, there's a lot of things have to happen. Yeah, it's a bit elaborate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He kind of, one of those things doesn't happen, which, to be honest, it very much could happen. Yeah, she could have told somebody else about it. I <laughs> exactly. Mean... <laughs> a different guy with the same beard. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was kind of sitting there, like, as I was rewatching it, thinking, eh, a bit much. <laughs> a bit much. <laughs> I'm glad it worked, though. <laughs> about a movie about a guy who puts a gimp suit on and shrinks. Exactly. And that's a bit much. <laughs> gimp suit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so Scott goes back to his cell. Then we get a nice and uh, another cool little moment with the ants, where they're bringing the mm. the mini suit in. They're like, you know, sort of dragging the suit in. That looks cool. I love that bit. Great. I really love that bit. Oh, the countdown was fantastic. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'd, I'd I'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> Completely forgotten about it. But yeah, it looks cool. Looks really cool. Uh, Scott puts on the suit and then he escapes. Just like that. Just like that. Um, well, no, don't, not just like that because we've got a, we've got the escape scene. Um, this is probably our first kind of actiony yeah, type scene one, in, in yeah. a proper action movie. Uh, Scott is on the, the flying ant, who eventually is named Anthony. Yeah, yeah, bless Anthony. him. Uh, so, uh, so they're flying about. They're on the side of the car. They're, he's on a paper at one point. He gets flicked away. Uh, yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool little set piece. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's just. This is what the movie is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, Scott passes out and he falls. <sighs> then he wakes up at Hank Pym's. <laughs> Bit of an anticlimax. Yeah. But he, he wakes up. Uh, he wakes up. Um, then we get a moment with the ants on the floor, mm-hmm. which is a bit gross. Bit weird. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yeah it kind of weirded me out a little bit having the ants everywhere. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't care for that at all. I didn't really I would... get that. Eh? I didn't really get that, but like, I, I... and the fact that they cleared when mm. he put his feet down on the floor, they because they're wrong. I, th- I suppose they're trying to show you that there's like a huge level of intelligence that they know that when he's putting his foot down to move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose. Eh. And they like him, so they like him. Yeah. I don't know him yet. The buds. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Pim wants Scott to break into Pimtech and steal the ye- the yellow jackets before um, before uh, before Cross can mm. you know take advantage of it and sell it. Uh, and he also wants all of the data relating to it as well. Is that when you get the line? Um, he's like, "My days of breaking into things yeah. and stealing stuff is over. So what do you want me to do? Break into things and steal stuff." That's a great line. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I'm in. <laughs> uh, did, uh, was it me or did uh, Michael uh, uh, Michael Douglas look like really thin and small in this movie? He does. He does. It's a little bit jarring. Yeah, because normally you see him and it, it feels like he's like six foot, six foot two, but it felt like he was like five foot three in this movie. Yeah. And like, mm. and like emaciated thin. There's a lot of sitting down as well. Maybe, it, maybe yeah. it's... He says at one point that wearing the wearing the suit for all those years took its toll. Maybe he's supposed to look a little bit shriveled and shrunk, or maybe frail. it's just because yeah. he's really, really old. <laughs> I think it's because he's really, really yeah, old. Yeah, could be that. <laughs> all, Probably. All, all those yeah. years with Catherine Zeta Jones will do it to you. That yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that that Welsh air flowing in. <laughs> we do love Catherine Zeta Jones on this show, though. We do. No, we don't. Sorrow, sorrow, was good. <laughs> darling, buds of me. Down the of me, yeah. <laughs> and Aaron has no idea what the hell that is. Nah. Nope, that's fine. That's okay. No, no idea. It's okay. Uh, uh, he's like, I've got the Zorro reference. Oh, yes. Yes, I got that one. <laughs> then we got a cool montage of Scott learning how to use the suit. Because every movie needs a montage. I have a montage. Yeah. Yep. Even Rocky had a montage. Yes, he did. He certainly <laughs> did. And eight. That's That's all the last five of them were, were montages. Well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I didn't realise that until I rewatched the um, 
was it the Ivan Drago one? How, mm-hmm. how that movie is literally just a recap of the last three movies. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like three minutes of talking and then montage, it's and then crazy. three minutes of talking and montage. I've never seen any of them. <laughs> he's not, oh, you haven't? What? Really, he's, yeah, he's not watched any oh, Rocky movies. Goodness. I've seen Creed. Uh, you've seen Creed, but you've not seen any Rocky movies. No. You, you can see no. one and two, and then well, I mean, I, three and four are, are pretty good, but um, uh, the, you don't really have to watch them. One is is, is fantastic. One's amazing. Let's pick yeah. Orlando one instead. But R- Rocky Four, which is like the 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 fight is awesome at the end with the uh, Ivan yeah. Drago. But literally, mm-hmm. apart from the fight, the rest of the movie is montages of the last three movies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. It's so, so it's and just I'm, one big previously on. Yeah, yeah. and, and, yeah, I, yeah, and th- exactly. The problem is, I never realized that until the last time I watched it, which wasn't that long ago. Right. And I was mm-hmm. like, this whole fucking movie's a montage. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Why was yeah, this my I sat thing? Down and watched uh, all of them. When Creed came out, I was like, I, I got to go watch all of them. So I watched all of them. I was like, three, montage, four, montage, five, <laughs> montage. It's like, it's just, that's all this thing is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad, I suppose. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, yeah, so that's going on. We get um, we get some cool moments with Scott and Hope, mm. where she's teaching them how to fight. There's some funny moments in there. Some cool moments in there. You know what? I, we we've not really mentioned it yet. Evangeline Lilly in this movie is awesome. She is. Mm. And, and I mean, I'm I was a massive, massive Lost fan. So when they said Evangeline Lilly was going to be in in a Marvel movie, I was like, yes, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Just Kate Sawyer's back. Get in. And I absolutely love her, and she's great in this movie. Yeah, she is. She is. There's a cool, uh, like, there's sort of more father and daughterness with her and uh, her and uh, Hank, um, <laughs> where he won't tell her what ha- how how mm. her mum died. She's mm-hmm. desperate to put on the Ant Man suit and become Ant Woman, um, but he won't let her because mm. he's not having it. Uh, so after we got all the montage and the learning, uh, Scott's learning how to control the ants and all mm-hmm. that, and planning the burglary as well of of uh, Pimtech. We find out at that point how Hope's mum died. Yeah, yeah. So she was the wasp, and they were stopping. They were trying to stop a nuke. Uh, I forget how who it had been launched by. Yeah, uh, uh, um, it was going the way to the US anyway, uh, and the wasp had to go subatomic. We'll just we'll just stop. Say Ru- we'll say Russia launched it. Be Russia, be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> she had to go subatomic to stop the nuke, and mm. she got lost. She yeah, lost. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that was that was a really really bad pun, but I love it. Yeah, <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> that one was for me, wasn't it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. See, we're nice to each other sometimes. <laughs> Every once in a while. Well, uh, so <laughs> then we get our Avengers tie in. Um, so uh, Scott's first official mission as Ant Man is he has to break into Avengers HQ, which he doesn't find out is Avengers HQ mm. until he's there. Which is my favourite set piece of the whole movie. Yeah, it's good. It's good. We get uh, so he, he uh, fights Falcon, mm-hmm. uh, played by Anthony Mackie, obviously. Uh, yeah, the fight's it's pretty damn good. Yeah, because you do kind of wonder how this is going to work when he's fighting like a fully grown man, mm-hmm. like right, w- right. when he's all shrunken and stuff. And it looks great. It looks really well done. It doesn't. It it does just look like Anthony Mackie's throwing himself around, but <laughs> but done really well. The only the only issue I had with this scene was uh, that he kept he was able to find Ant Man so quick, like yeah. constantly. That, that yeah, was the only issue. Other than that, it was fantastic. He had like the tracker on him, didn't he? Mm. And yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. I suppose he would, wouldn't he? He would have like he's because he, he's an Avenger now, so mm. you would expect that he would have some Stark tech in there to be uh, true, tracky true. in that. Going by the end of uh, Age of Ultron, he's 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 a legit member of yeah. the team. So, but he's got a proper suit now as well. Yeah. Because before yeah. he just had the wings, basically, and a helmet. Mm. Um, yeah, I yeah, suppose we'll, it. I suppose it makes sense. We'll let him off. A, yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah, that that Stark would would uh, pimp it out a little bit. Yeah, you would hope. Yeah. Uh, so Scott goes back to Pym's uh, house mansion thing, and uh, Hank Pym starts going down through and saying, saying he's a damn fool mm. for going up an Avenger and all Reckless. that. Uh, but it Hot turns head. out 
He's a hothead. <laughs> we don't like hotheads. No, we don't. Uh, it, it turns out that he succeeded in the mission and he got the MacGuffin. <laughs> MacGuffin. We, I don't think we ever see it again, do we? I don't think no, so. No, I don't think we do. Uh, so Cross has up to the security at, at uh, Pimtech. So they need to bring in Lewis and all that, mm. uh, the other guys, to help with the big mission and possibly plan. Yeah. Yeah. This is this, this is a bit with his um his cunning disguise. Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. Because we get a, we get another funny moment where uh, just be, just before they're going to do that, uh, where Hope tells Lewis that she's put him in the system as a security guard. Right. Yeah. And he goes, "I'm mm. in the system. I'm in the system." <laughs> and then one of one of his mates goes, "You're in the system." <laughs> it's it's just he's so innocent. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I, I, I think my guy should should whistle. I yeah. Think he should whistle. Yes. <laughs> That's just... <laughs> You, you, I would love to think that a lot of that just came from him. Like, uh, like oh yeah, I, I genuinely think like a lot of stuff he does in this movie is probably like stuff he came up with. Like, this mm-hmm. is what my character could, would do because mm-hmm. he is just a lovable idiot. Yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> and you wonder why him and Scott Lang have been friends for so long. <laughs> <laughs> so Scott goes to finish uh, visit his daughter again. Yeah, uh, he starts in bed sleeping. Um, so he's going to see her before they go and do the, the big break in. The job. The job. Mm. Yeah, so the break in starts. Lewis is whistling. <laughs> but he's whistling It's a Small World after yep. all. Mm-hmm. Because it's owned by Disney. Of so course. Why the hell not? <laughs> why not? Mm-hmm. But it, it's lead, <laughs> it works on layers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you ever go to. Um, Disney World in Florida. Go on that ride; it'll be stuck in your head for about a year. <laughs> yeah, it's about how long it took, took to get out of uh-huh, it. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The place next to it does good burgers, though, from what I remember. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So Scott's uh, Scott is breaking in. He's on a surfboard of ants, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bit where the ants kind of climb up, they like form a sort of ladder, I guess, and uh, he's able to climb up. Yeah, looks cool. It's badass. They they do really well with yeah. all of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, Hank Pym arrives to see the yellow jacket display. Uh, we've also got the two cops there uh, who try and they, mm. they kind of try and not arrest him, but they, they try and question him at that point. Um, one of the guys steals his car, steals the car to get rid how, of them. How does how do they not know that Hank Pym is not his lawyer in the first place? Like, should they not know who Hank Pym is? Like, is he not a big? You enough- would think that well. They had the the ants over the camera, mm. but I think there's there's a a moment where there's like a a grainy photo from right. another camera in the police station mm. that like the ants missed, I guess. Right, lazy. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> lazy. <laughs> so they, they ha- he has like a grainy photo, and he, go- he goes like, "Holy shit, that's Hank Pym." Right. So okay. Okay. That. I think that's how. Right. Yeah. No, I get that now. But you would think like, you know. People would see them, yeah. See him coming at the police station and go, "You're not a lawyer. You're Hank Pym. <laughs> yeah. You cheeky man. <laughs> you're you're, uh, you're the old cons- man. Yeah. <laughs> Considering he's uh, probably as big as like Bill Gates or, or somebody like yeah, that, you would think yeah. that people would go, "Oh, that's Hank Pym." <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we get another cool bit with the ants where they're crawling around the computers, the circuitry in the computers. That looks awesome. And then we find out that uh, Cross is about to sell the yellow jacket suit to Hydra. <gasps> Bastard. It's Bloody always that Hydra. Yeah. Bloody Hydra. Yeah. Swine's shoddy. And that's probably the last... We haven't really heard of Hydra since Ant-Man. Well, they're all over Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at this point. Hmm, right, okay. Um, yep, yep. But, yeah... Because, well, S.H.I.E.L.D. is no longer there in Age of Ultron, no. is it? No. No, because no. Cap has got the line, this is what S.H.I.E.L.D. should be. Yeah. So, at this point, like, uh, Hydra have won, basically. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Hydra always win. Yeah. It's more it's still... more of a moral victory for Hydra, well, though, isn't it? Yeah. 
Bless them. <laughs> <laughs> Misunderstood, if anything. Uh, yeah, so Scott is, at this point, Did mission... Mis- misunderstood. <laughs> misunderstood, yeah. yeah. That was, um, Poor guys. Great. Yeah, yeah. You know, they just, they had, they, ah, shut up. <laughs> so, <laughs> you were going to say they had an idea. They had an idea, yeah. <laughs> and this, is, th- this Aaron is without drink. I'm on, I'm on um, Coke Zero at the moment, so, yeah. You know who else had an idea? I, yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> move on, quickly. Stephen Hawking. Quick, quickly move Stephen on. Stephen Hawking had an idea. Oh, <laughs> take a drink. Yeah. <laughs> so Scott is mission impossibling into the chamber that holds the yellow jacket suit. Um, so we've well, there's a cool bit where they have to switch off the. It's a standard mission yeah, impossible thing. Yeah. They have to switch off the lasers in time, um, but it's a trap. <gasps> no, that was my admiral app. I did like it. No, it was terrible. It's a trap. It's more like it's, it's a trap. trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. Anyway. So Scott gets trapped in the chamber. Everything kicks off. Uh, Hank gets shot and Cross escapes with the yellow jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's a cool little Mm. scene. Uh, You know, everything's kind of happening. Hope is kicking ass. Mm. Um, Scott is trying to get out of the chamber. It it looks pretty cool. He's like banging about the chamber kind of thing. And then we... Have a cool bit where Scott is. Um, he's he's got to stop Cross escaping with the yellow jacket mm. suit. So he's running through a scale model of the building, and mm. the the security guards are shooting at him. And the build the scale model is like blown up and yeah. that. And you got some nice sort of like you which, know which warry. they pretty much they set that up at the start of the movie. Didn't yeah. They? yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I love that little moment. It's yeah. you know the they've got some sort of missile sound effects and all that sort of thing. <laughs> Um, then we get the tank keychain. Oh yeah, which is oh, yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Um, because of course it's not just a bloody keychain. Yeah, <laughs> you uh, you it's, it. re- it's really well set up. It, it is. It's really that... cool. When you see yeah. him pick it up at the start of the movie, it's yeah. like that's coming back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's the fact that it's got the, the giant chain on the back of it as well. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. It's really well done. It looks oh, great. Yeah. It looks yeah. really good. Um, so Scott is chasing after uh, Cross. And at this point, we get Anthony. Anthony! <laughs> no! Uh, this, cr- this crushed me. Yeah. This yeah, actually crushed I, me. I did make a note. First Dobby, now this. <laughs> I don't know about the Dobby. <laughs> Dobby, no. Poor Dobby. No, Shut up, screw Dobby. Dobby. Heartless bastard. <laughs> so, uh, screw Dobby. So screw. you were, you were, you were more upset about the about the the ant getting shot as opposed to the uh, um, the lamb getting blown up or uh, shrunk. Uh, uh, definitely. I think more the lamb. No, I was, I was, I was gutted when Anthony died. Were you really? Yeah. Yeah, because Scott's got like this connection with with Anthony, but he's not. Yeah. He's, they've been together for like two scenes. That's fine. That's all you need sometimes. Eh. He's no, like, I wasn't really bothered. He's like, I'm going to call this one Anthony, and I love the way he says that line, like Anthony, and then he looks at Hope as if he's going to get a little giggle, and she's just like not having it. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the suit. Give me the suit right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think my daughter in the theater actually like put her hand to her mouth and was like, oh, "No, I would have been the same." I was just like, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> I do genuinely like of all the deaths in the MCU, that one cuts oh, me the piss most. off. <laughs> that one's the worst. <laughs> I can take them all, but not Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, yes, yeah, so. There's a cool. I think it's Scott Lang who says this actually, uh, as they're you know, arson about on the chopper. Um, or it may be Hank Pym. I didn't note that. I just noted the quote. Do you think this is... Do, uh, wait a minute. Do you think you could stop the future with a heist? It was never just a heist. <laughs> and then Pym Tech blows the fuck up. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it was... I think it was Scott who said it. Then we get... Yeah, I think so. Then we get uh, a really, really cool fight between Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket where they're inside the suitcase and it's fallen yes. from the helicopter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got... A, there's there's a moment where I think they activate Siri. Yep. And <laughs> Siri plays a song. I, I can't remember which song. It's, uh, 
oh crap some uh by the cure disturbed or something That's like that I, mm, something like that yeah yeah um just know that one from star trek beyond <laughs> <laughs> So that's yeah, that's, that's a cool moment uh, where, where they're fighting inside the suitcase. That, that's pretty badass. And uh, so the suitcase falls into a swimming pool. Um, we see for the first time the, the full size uh, yellow jacket when it yeah. jumps out of the water. And then we get <laughs> we get an awesome bit where uh, they're, they're sort of shrunk down again, um, and Scott uses a ping pong bat. Swat yellow jacket into a fly zapper. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. The thing about this movie is like they, they had to get like super imaginative, and they really they really do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I mean that. I think that bit in the in the suitcase where they're fighting in the suitcase is actually my favorite bit in the film. It's a good. It's a good yeah. moment. It's a great. Yeah. Moment. Mm. Oh, definitely. So, uh, yeah, so so Yellow Jacket escapes from the fly lab, because of course he does, and it turns out that, uh, well, Scott has been arrested again, he's been caught mm-hmm. again, uh, and then it turns out that Yellow Jacket is going for Scott's daughter. <gasps> I know. No! Because we, if you didn't get it from the first hour of this movie, you're going <laughs> to get it now. Yeah. It's like... Okay, they keep showing his daughter. They keep showing his daughter. He's got a really good relationship with his daughter. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Yellow Jacket's going to do. Oh, it's his daughter. But then oh, how- he's going to have the- No, <laughs> really? How d- did, did he at any point know who he was? He does now, because he's the villain. Yeah. I think he does say that when, when he's trapped in the chamber. He says he says his name. Mm. Eh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, Yellow Jacket is holding them hostage, mm. as you do when you're a villain. Yeah. Then we get the Thomas the Tank Engine fight. Yeah, man. Which is great. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yes, definitely. Th- this is one of those things that I um, I genuinely wish they'd kept out of the trailer for the movie. Mm-hmm. However, mm. what you saw in the trailer was not nearly as good as what they did in the film. Like when yeah. when they they showed you a little bit of it and it looked like oh that's going to be badass but then you yeah. watch the trailer when you actually watch the movie you're like oh that is incredible yeah and yeah. It, and it's all to do with the way as we said before sort of like it pans out and it just goes mm-hmm. <laughs> it just fall, <laughs> falls on just its two, side two bits of plastic <laughs> just, yeah. like in, in like it's ridiculous it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous but it's so good it is it is good uh, you've also got the there's uh, the I don't know if you guys watch any of the kids movies. Um, uh, Boss Baby that came out this yeah. past year. Yeah, no, um, they that, did. Though. They did a very similar scene where the, the you got the like the seven year old boy who's fighting his uh, his like ten uh, month old uh, brother, mm. and it looks like this huge fight. And yes, then they yes. cut to the parents watching it, and the and it's just the boys dragging him along the grass, and it's going really <laughs> really slow. <laughs> Same kind of scene. It, it had to have been taken from that or, or, or inspired by it or something. Oh, it has to have been, yeah. I know the scene you're talking about, yeah. It, it's great, that bit. It's kind of like that episode of Family Guy where it opens up with a big space battle mm. and Stewie's f- flight flying all the spaceships to attack Peter's head. <laughs> and then it just turns out it's just Stewie playing in the garden. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. They, they, mm-hmm. they, exactly. They used to do it on Rugrats as well all the time. It was like, oh, Rugrats, man. I used to love that show. I never watched that. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a childhood? Yeah, but mine was before yours. All right, stupid. Sorry, forget. Mm-hmm. You're like twenty years older than yeah. me. <laughs> Treasure, fragile. <laughs> Turned to Joe Pesci there for a second. You did a little bit. Yeah. Richard, <laughs> Richard, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> anyway, so we also get to this bit. Uh, we've got a cool moment where um, where uh, Scott is like hiding in the in the carpet. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of gro- kind of cool, but also gross as hell because <laughs> he says I'm not alone or something like that, and all of those ants start coming out of the carpet, and yeah. that, that's bugging. Mm. That's icky. Yeah, Don't yeah. Like that, that. Mm. She's obviously not cleaning that. You're throwing that away. Mm. Dirty. Anyway, but uh, yes, yeah, so we've got the <laughs> we've got the big battle. We've got the big Thomas the Tank thing. We've got them jumping on top of the toy car- uh, carts and all that kind of thing. Uh, there's a cool bit where Scott throws one of the, one of the carriages at, at yeah uh, Yellow Jacket, which is cool as well. 
uh, we get a funny moment with uh, with Lewis and all that in in the in their van. Uh, they're rushing to help Scott, and they're you know they're sort of going out. Uh, he's our boy. We have got to help him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then they, they they pull up, and they see all the police there, and, and um, Lewis just goes back away slowly, back away slowly. Uh, so they they've basically said, "Oh, oh fuck him. We're not going to jail." Um, <laughs> They've got us back. Yeah. They've <laughs> so yeah, it's the it's kind of the end of the battle. Um, uh, Yellow Jacket is uh, has Scott can't beat him unless he goes subatomic to get inside the suit and mm. destroy him. Which so is that's dangerous. So it is very dangerous. Yeah, we know this. Mm. We've been told. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. It's, it's We've already lost a, one person. Yes. Mm. It's like a don't cross the streams type thing. Yeah. Know, mm-hmm. um, so uh, before Yellow Jacket kills his daughter, uh, Scott goes subatomic and he 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 uh, manages to kill uh, Yellow Jacket. And then Scott, we get some nice graphics here. It like sort of yeah. you know, kind of it goes you know like sort of bugs and stuff, and then he continues to shrink, and it's all just like a kaleidoscope sort of thing. <laughs> it's cool. It looks really cool. Um, and then just when you think he's all lost and stuff. He hears his daughter crying his name, and then he because why not? Exactly, exactly. exactly. It all comes back to the um, daughter. Yes. It, it, to be fair, I'm saying that it, it, that is an absolutely beautiful moment. So I'm not gonna. I'm not yeah. taking anything away from it. Oh, it's really well set up throughout the entire film. It is. It yeah. is, and it, you know he, he has the sort of enlargement thingy mm. which he puts at his belt um, and then his daughter's like sat on his on her beds and you kind of see some he man stuff and then he's back uh, we get another shot of the giant Thomas the Tank Engine outside which is yep. awesome I want one and the giant ant as well mm-hmm. which is cool mm-hmm. not Anthony though not Anthony no. he, he dead <laughs> he dead he's dead mm-hmm. yep so we get one more one more Lewis moment before the movie ends this is at the end of our movie yeah uh, Lewis is telling uh, Scott that there is an Avenger looking for him because as we will see from one of the post credit scenes, uh, they have found Bucky, uh, Cap and Falcon have found Bucky, and they need some help. Yeah. So oh, you missed the scene with the huge ant underneath the underneath the table. Yes, while they're having the dead oh. Aye, aye. Oh. <laughs> no thanks. Not, so not, not a fan of that, Aaron. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. Oh. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it's like a little puppy. No, no, it's a big ant. No, <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't want that in my house. No, 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 no. When it tries to eat you, especially not around my tea. No, yeah, no, no, <laughs> never that. Uh, yeah. So Lewis is telling Scott that there's an Avenger looking for him, and the film ends. Just, it's just great. Like the the Lewis. Is telling him, and then he says, "So, so, what did you tell him?" He said, "Yes," and then kind of <laughs> he smiles at him, and then it's cut to black. It's just great. Uh, our Stanley cameo of, of the movie is kind of a throwaway one that, on this movie. Uh, it's just uh, Stanley is part of Lewis's story. Is it the only one where he actually doesn't say any words because he's just mimicking what yeah, Lewis? Yeah, he's, he's mouthing along to Lewis. It's just I don't it's, remember that. He, he's he's just in that bit for like a fraction of a second. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's like, did Stanley have anything to do with Ant Man? I don't think he did. Probably it's just because of no. Stanley. Yeah. Well, um, it's it, it credits him with uh, characters by. Yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. But yeah, that's that's our cameo of our Stanley cameo in this one. Uh, post credit scenes first one we get to see the wasp suit yeah uh, and Hope going it's about damn time <laughs> I love that line at least she didn't say maybe next time because as we know no next time baby as, as we know that's poison mm-hmm. you can't be saying that because no. they'll just replace you with Don Cheadle <laughs> <laughs> just put a wig on Don Cheadle <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy it <laughs> I'd watch yeah. it <laughs> well, it's basically the same haircut as Kate Blanchett in uh, <laughs> Crystal Skull, isn't it? So she could get Kate Blanchett in there. That's brilliant. Oh my god, it is. It is. Oh no. Yeah, is that ruined like it for you? It's a bob hair, something. So it's really weird. I've just ruined Ant <laughs> Man for Kev by mentioning Kate Blanchett. And... You, you've just ruined Evangeline Lilly. It forever? is the same haircut as Kate <laughs> It Blanchett. is. 
Oh, God, did you not no. notice that before? <gasps> no. Ah, oh. I feel a bit bulky now. <laughs> Uh, second one, we get the clip from Civil War with uh, Bucky's arm trapped in the vice and uh, mm. Falcon going, I know a guy. <laughs> and that's our movie. That is our movie. Is it, and and, and um, going back and rewatching, how how was everybody with this movie? Like, Obviously, everybody's got fond memories of the first time. How do we feel about watching it again? I mean, Aaron, you said earlier that you, you watched it twice in preparation. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm taking it, you're still very much a big fan of this movie. Oh, yeah, I... I thoroughly enjoy this film uh, from start to finish uh I, I don't think there's there's very much that that i didn't like even like little quirks here and there um it was just like it was just like ah eh, no big deal and then just keep on going with the with the fanta- fantastic story that was there I, th- I think it does it's a lot of um like i was saying earlier like it's it's a complete departure from from any other Marvel movie, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know when we when we had Winter Soldier, it's like it's a thriller noir spy movie. Mm-hmm. And yep. We finally got Guardians of the Galaxy, which is like our big space opera. Yeah. And then we take it right back down to street level for a heist movie with Ant Man. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's mm-hmm. great. Like it's I love when they do. Like I love the team up movies, and I love the the big franchise like the Ant Man movies and stuff like that. But I love when they do something completely different. And it pays off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like the fact that there they did have one Avenger in there, but he was really only in it for like five minutes. Yeah. And uh, uh, it, other than that, it was just pretty much him against the bad uh, against the bad guy. Um, and I, I love those kind of films. It it is good, and then it's sort of just that's their way of saying, "Hey guys, remember this? This is a, an Avengers movie." Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's still because we've never heard of Hank Pym in yeah. in the MCU before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've got to because obviously he's a, a huge name in mm. comics that you have got to bring him in there and just remind people, look, this is still the MCU. Yeah, right. And they do but I think even if they hadn't had uh, 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 the fight with Falcon in there, um, having Stark at the beginning to yeah. me enough to know that that this was going to bring him into like the the entire fold of the, mm. of the MCU. Mm-hmm. Plus, you you have that. The, it's the shield building, isn't it? Yeah, and it's it's the um, the the construction of the shield building from uh, Winter Soldier, which we just see get blown up. Is it right? Yeah, it's, right. It's, I didn't realize that. It's like the beginnings of the Triskelion. Yeah. So we've just seen it in Winter Soldier getting blown to hell, and then we see it in Ant Man getting built. I didn't notice that. Yeah. Truth be told, that's pretty cool. There you go. There's also um, Hank Pym has a line early on when he's telling Scott what he wants him to do, and Scott goes, "Well, the first thing I would tell you do is call the Avengers." And um, <laughs> and uh, Hank Pym goes, "Well, I've spent my entire life trying to keep mm. this technology out of the hands of a Stark. I'm not going to start now or something like mm. this." Something Which like is a great that. line. Yeah, yeah it is. It it's is. a yeah. great yeah. little line. So yeah, you're right, Aaron. Even if they didn't have Falcon in there, you you knew that it was connected to the MCU anyway. But yeah, but having him in there really didn't it didn't diminish it at all. No, no, I don't think it. I don't think it was over the top. I think no, it was yeah. uh, because you it's got just a, the right amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Paul, it's like a little sprinkle of Avengers in there. <laughs> And Paul Rudd saying that basically is what everybody who was watching these movies was saying during every movie. Yeah. Why not call the other Avengers? Why yeah. are you going it alone? You've got a team now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Iron Man 3, call the Avengers. <laughs> Don't, do not take on the Mandarin or Smaug yourself. Call the Avengers. Oh, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get uh, Piper. She's going to help me. <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> Captain America. Do not take Bucky on yourself. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> or don't take on the entire Hydra by yourself. <laughs> Call Tony Stark. Exactly. Tony's taking on the Mandarin. The Guardians are taking on Ronan. Uh-huh. And uh, Cap's got, like, Hydra. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take on everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, by Iron Man 3. You know what's good against fire? Fucking vibranium. A vibranium shield. <laughs> A vibranium shield and the Avengers. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Paul Rod was doing. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Just, just call them. Just get them in. Mm-hmm. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. And I'm Blake from the History of Bad Ideas. And we'll get back to your regularly scheduled program here in just a second, Geek listeners. But we do a weekly podcast called The History of Bad Ideas. Yeah, well, we'll discuss things like television or movies or music or games or any other thing that falls into our geek-related uh, podcast knowledge. You can find us on uh, Geek Life Radio, Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, or Radio-Blitz, Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central, or you can listen to us whenever the hell you want on iTunes and Stitcher. Check us out. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. So, what we like to do when we're rounding out the show is um, we like to throw out some trivia. And uh, this is when I pull back the curtain and get myself on IMDb, because I don't really know any trivia. <laughs> and uh, there's a few interesting ones here. It's um, So at first, the film was meant to focus on the original Ant-Man, which was Hank Pym. However, Pym developed several personalities, one of whom abused his girlfriend. Yeah, I read that. Mm-hmm. And producers decided he was not family-friendly. Instead, the focus shifted to Scott Lang with Pym as a mentor and supporting character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that was when he said that it took its toll, the suit took its toll. That was mm, yeah. one of the big storylines as he started... Battering his missus. Yep. That's not very good. Very good. It's <laughs> kind of kind of strange that they would have that in a comic book, though. Well... It's in there. You'd I've ex- never read it, but it is, it is a thing. You expect yeah. it in a DC comic book, but not, not Marvel. Oh, yeah. too, too happy in that cafe. Yeah. <laughs> Too dark for you. It's too hearts and flowers, <laughs> Marvel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, DC, Batman goes about slapping all his women. You know, it's just kind of the dumb thing. Yeah, it's Sean Connery. <laughs> Sean Connery, yeah. Allegedly. I'm going to have to show you that video. <laughs> so, uh, I think Aaron mentioned this one earlier. When, when Paul Rudd told his nine-year-old son he was going to be Ant-Man, his son said, wow, I can't wait to see how stupid that will be. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> stupid nine-year-olds. <laughs> Oh man, My- Michael Douglas celebrated his seventieth, seventieth, seventy. Good lord! Uh, birthday on set as an homage to his on-screen character, and to celebrate the milestone, the crew presented him with a birthday cake, decorated, <laughs> decorated, decorated in icing with ants crawling over a film reel. Ew. Well, I wouldn't be eating that. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty gross. Posters for. Pingo Doce, the Brazilian soda company Bruce Banner worked for in The Incredible Hulk, can be seen in the France- San Francisco scenes. Oh. I didn't okay. spot any of them. Yeah, I yeah. didn't notice that. That's pretty cool, though. There were San Francisco scenes. It, so is is that technically where the first time that they acknowledged that The Incredible Hulk was part of the MCU? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because they kind of danced around it, and they were just saying, "Well, no, that is the." the well, no, they put they put Hulk in the Phase One box, hadn't they? So that's a pretty big acknowledgement. Well, yeah, but yeah, mm. okay. So you're talking about the Incredible Hulk film? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like we all knew it was part of the MCU, but they kind of just weren't talking about mm. it. Right. Mm. Okay. Uh, while Edgar Wright was working on the film, he requested that Marvel refrain from using Ant-Man or Wasp until he'd finished the movie, which is why they were absent from the Avengers in 2012. Oh, okay. Uh, it's probably a good thing. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. There's far too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Lang suggests calling the Avengers to assist. In the comics, Ant-Man was an original Avenger. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, uh... Hank Pym created Ultron, not Tony Stark. Yeah, I've read that before, yeah. Whilst filming a scene with Michael Douglas, Paul Rudd attempted to reenact the famous interrogation (laughs) scene with (laughs) Sharon Stone from Basic Instinct. (laughs) Rudd Rudd ultimately failed with the attempt, resulting in Michael Douglas saying, what are you fucking pervert? (laughs) That's awesome. I wonder if he was wearing a, a dress with uh, with no underwear on. I th- hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would totally have to do that. Yep. You, you'd yep. have to. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> the ants were specifically designed to be less grisly and friendlier than in real life. The ants were generally influenced by Saharan silver ants. They possess longer legs, can use their front legs as arms, and that's pretty weak-ass trivia for you there. Mm-hmm. 
The bullet ants were influenced by Ray Winston. They were made to look heavier, and their hairs were made thicker to resemble horns. What the hell has that got to do with Ray Winston? <laughs> <laughs> that is mental. <laughs> and 286 people found that interesting. you having a laugh. <laughs> why, why would people find that interesting? I have no idea. Pe- people find it's all sorts strange. of silly things. I guess. <laughs> At the beginning of the film, set in 1989, the Triskelion is being constructed. Uh, Shield's main quarters in Captain America. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, because I kind of thought I might have been wrong with that one. I was, I was quite pleased with that, though. <laughs> According to Evangeline Lilly, Hope's role was much smaller in Edgar Wright's drafts. It was beefed up significantly during rewrites, with Lilly providing some ideas and input. I'd, I'd heard a lot about that, like um, when Edgar Wright left that a lot of the characters were putting more in. So they were getting, like, um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I I think I read somewhere that uh, it it was mainly just um, uh, Scott and uh, uh, and Darren. And then then the rest of it, it was that that was all uh, uh, stuff that they added after Edgar Wright dropped out. That's mental. Yeah. To think how the movie ended up as well, it's like, it's pretty much... I, w- I wouldn't say it's a perfect movie, but it's almost perfect. You yeah. know, it's, yeah, it's really good. There's yeah. not a lot wrong with this film at all. I'd still like to see what uh, Edgar Wright's version would be. Definitely, um, definitely. So uh, I'll, I'll end with this one, because I found this one quite interesting. John Slattery, that's who it's called. John Slattery, that's yeah. uh, Tony Stark's dad, yeah. yeah. Uh, in an interview at Comic-Con, director Peyton Reed said that Marvel originally wanted Steve Buscemi for the role of Hank Pym. Hmm. It's a very different hang pimp. Yeah. Very. Yeah. yeah. Um, Think that could have worked? Why the hell not? He would have looked a hell of a lot more geeky, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Harder to de age. To de Because uh, of his weird face. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, but due to scheduling conflict, they had to go with Michael Douglas, their second choice. God. <laughs> Michael Douglas is your second choice. <laughs> <laughs> Buscemi would later be rumoured to be in the running for the role of Uncle Ben. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, no. No, no, no. So, can we assume from this that Steve Buscemi will be turning up in the MCU at some point? Sounds like. Yeah, I would think so, at some point. Because <laughs> it's just kind of like, yep, we're just going to um, get him in somewhere. So yeah. He's a great actor. Oh, he's a fantastic actor. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we will end with that one. Yeah. And uh, this has been The Road to Infinity Wars, and man Anything else you want to talk about? No, good movie. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Uh, so, Aaron, quickly, before we um, before we take off in that, mm-hmm. how's it been being on, uh, on 365, The Road to Infinity Wars? Uh, it's been very nerve-wracking. Nerve-wracking? <laughs> oh, man. We try to make it as easy as possible. I <laughs> know oh, it was it was much easier than I was expecting. Much easier. But I think, uh, of course, it, it helped that I didn't really talk that much. So you know, I, I kind of just kind of <laughs> I had my training wheels on the entire time. I was just kind of <laughs> so. well. Next time you come you did on, fine. Next time you come on, you'll be hosting. So, <laughs> <laughs> but we we will get you on again to talk properly about your projects and pimp you out a bit. Because, as I said earlier, this has been a long time coming. It's, we, we've we been getting super busy as of late, and it's we cannot find the friggin' time. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's getting hey. mental. <laughs> you guys are doing two a week and uh, up until the end of April, so you guys are, you guys are just nuts at this. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I can't wait till April. <laughs> I can't wait till Infinity Wars comes out. Not not to see Infinity Wars, just so that this is over. It's going to take six months off. We'll get to that. We'll just be like, you know what? Let's just t- take a couple of weeks. <laughs> Let's just not bother. We'll have to stockpile Eight, some six, episodes. Six, sitting on our butts and drinking. Oh, I wouldn't yeah. mind. I would not mind. We'll do Road to Solo after that. Oh, yeah. Road to Solo next. Yeah. God, uh, no. No, uh, no. We might do... <laughs> We might do your Blackadder spin-off if you want. Yeah, I could do that. Because that was meant that, to happen at the start of the year. about a year ago, and then uh, <laughs> Life at Mars about three years ago. <laughs> Notice my ideas always make the cut, but yours do Yeah, don't. I noticed. Don't, don't think for a second I haven't noticed that shit. <laughs> well, as soon as you put, start putting in 70% of the work, then you will have what you want. What's 70 now? 
I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm 73. I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> was, I think it was like 80 20 uh, yeah, a couple was, episodes ago. Was. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas Eve, Eve, Aaron. It was like ninety-five five. So I, I'm, I'm increasing. I'm increasing. I'm there you go. That. Damn, I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to remember. No, you can't do that. Fuck you. I'm gonna have to remember what percentage I'm giving you. <laughs> like twelve percent. Twelve percent. So, uh, Aaron, let, let everybody know where they can find you uh, about your project one last time, and then we will let you go, my good man. Okay, um, let's see, you can uh, find me uh, pretty much anywhere, just look for Aaron Goodmiller, um, available, or available, uh, you can find me on <laughs> Facebook and Twitter, and uh, I'm on Instagram, I don't think I've ever even posted anything on Instagram, but uh, but I'm there, um, and uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, I mean, we, we got the uh, two films we're working towards uh, making, especially one that we're going to be shooting this summer called uh, Fine, about geocaching. I'm actually really, really interested in that. I'm, I'm going to go and have a look and see what geocaching is properly and, and see if um, anybody does it over here. But like I say, it's, I've it's, never heard of that. it's not going to be a good result. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Groundhog Day one sounds really, really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. you want, I'll, I'll send you a copy of the script as well so you can take a look at it. Yeah, sweet. sweet. W- will it be with 10% more Adam Sander or are you staying away from Adam Sander uh... for that one? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Adam Sandler in it. Good, because <laughs> I remember when you when you messaged me um, saying it was called Click, and and that was the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, ew. <laughs> yeah, I, I really wanted to come up with a better title, but the the title just kind of fit with. Uh, yeah, it works. It totally works. It's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could have had like door closey relive thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good title. <laughs> door closes, man relives. You could go for one of those literal titles. <laughs> wow. That's a good title. That's a good title. Yes. But the whole yeah, the, the whole um one shot, that yeah, that kind of blew me away a little bit. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. with that we will we will let you go and again we will be back with another um Road to Infinity Wars. The next one will be Civil, Civil War. War. With Mr. Chris Johnson, who's um, another actor that we we absolutely love. We've had him on the show once before. Yep. For the interviewed uh, him on set. On on yeah, we interviewed mm-hmm. him on the black site set. So that's going to be a good one. But uh, Aaron, this has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed speaking to you properly for once. Yeah, same here. It's been awesome. It has been. It has been. We'll have to get you on for a proper episode, like a regular schmegular episode. Yes. When yes, we, definitely. When we just berate everything. Yeah, and then then I can find out uh, about Chris's movie, find out where it's at. Yeah, yeah, man. I'll need to find it first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I I was pretty much just the the coffee boy on set. Uh, and you, you still haven't even read the once. script yet, either. Mm, I, I've still not read it. No, no. You didn't make coffee once. I I made bollocks. It. I'm sure I made one for myself. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, you didn't just offer. Anyone else in just the house? Just make no, because when you go to somebody else's house, you don't make coffee for the room; you make it for yourself. That's bollocks. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> nope. Well, to be fair, I was drinking beer anyway. But yeah. <laughs> on set, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he was, oh my goodness, he was a beer drinking some bitch on set. <laughs> well, let's not go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it was good fun though. It was very good fun. It was yeah, uh, different. It was good. Very was good. different. Oh, being on set is the best. Absolutely the best. Well, I wouldn't say it was the best. It was a great week. I, I really <laughs> enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed no. it. We'll get there. We will get there. Uh, I was I was speaking to the guy yesterday, and uh, yeah, he's 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 getting there. Yeah. He's getting there. It's it's a lot of faffy stuff. With you know, he's he's uh, been doing see, like green screen things. There's there's mm. a bit oh, where wow. there's a bit where um, the guy's sort of dragged back mm. by the ghost by the leg. Mm-hmm. Um, we did that on green screen. Um, Kev had to Kev just a bit put his back out, yeah, pulling pretty, the guy back. Much put my back out. Um, <laughs> that was fun though. So he's but he's having to because he thought it'd just be like a click and it goes doink, but it's not. He's having to do it frame by frame. I think that's that's uh, what's been taking up the okay. the time. So, but he's getting there. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 So Aaron, again, this has been great. It has been. Yeah, it's, it's been, been awesome. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to having you back. Yeah, I can't wait to come back. It'll be it'll be great. Maybe, maybe a little bit less nervous though. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> yes, a lot be... less nervous, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more talkative. I'm, I'm hoping. 
to be completely honest, I couldn't tell you were nervous. And no, no, you were fine, and that's what counts. I was expecting you to go. Oh no, no, no! You were very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, no, I couldn't even tell. It's fine. When we record these, I'm usually nervous. So usually right. nervous that I'm going to say something and Chris is going to punch me in the face. <laughs> well, it's only happened once though. So have I punched you in the face? Just once. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Aaron. Road to Infinity Wars. Are you looking forward to the uh, the Infinity War movie coming up? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, especially since I've been watching these every week, and uh, my son has actually gotten into it as well. And we sit. He's like, "All right, what are we watching this week?" And so we'll go through and we'll sit and watch a movie every week. And so it's been it's been really cool, kind of ramping up to see this movie. Cool, man. Yeah, you don't listen. You don't letting your son listen to us, are you? Oh God. Uh, no. No. No, 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 no. no, he's he's only ten or eleven. He's only eleven, Why so no. I don't I don't even let my wife listen to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Um, did did you happen to put a top five together? Oh yeah, I actually oh, yeah. did. Shit. Oh shit! I can't believe I forgot about that. Right, go on then. Let's <laughs> do your top five. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. I'm that That's e- all right. That's I'm, all right. I'm like, just that excited like to mess. speak to you. <laughs> Uh, so I have uh, number five is uh, Ant Man. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, number four is Winter Soldier. Nice. Uh, three is Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. Um, two is the original Avengers. Nice. And uh, number one is the original Iron Man. Mm, nice. um, cool. For for me, I just the that Iron Man was just fantastic. I, I love. I love the arc of, of Tony Stark from, from start to finish, going from uh, being this, uh, e- even though he's uh, kind of a douchebag throughout the entire thing, he, uh, um, he, his, his thing of, I want to blow stuff up to, I just want to help yeah. people. Yeah. It, it's just, it's a fantastic arc. Plus he's the, he's the true villain in Age of Ultron, as we discovered. Yes, nope, yes. No, he's not. <laughs> See, Aaron, Aaron agrees. Aaron agrees. No. Nope. Well, oh, I've listened to half of the uh, of the episode this past week, so yes, I agree. <laughs> you, the, the absolute pipe and hot mess of an episode. <laughs> T- T- Toby is fantastic, but my God. <laughs> he knows how to derail the show. Oh, anyway. he certainly does. <laughs> and that is his one purpose of coming on the show. Right? <laughs> he, he, basically, he basically said, this episode will break two hours. That's one mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, I will derail you constantly. And, it's like, <laughs> Thank and you. he did. He, 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 oh, he certainly did. He yes. bloody did. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we we'll love him, though. We do love him. <laughs> Chris gets lots of naked pictures from him, so... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, again, this has been fantastic. We will have you yeah. on properly, and thank you for your top five. Can't believe I forgot about that. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we will sign out. Ah,